Thanks for joining us. Um, how are you keeping at the moment? Um, I read recently that you were um, announced that you had tested positive for the coronavirus. I'm sure that came as a bit of a shock, didn't it? Yeah, it was strange. It was um, it was a weird feeling. Our, the doc called, gave me a call and we were told if we were to get a call, then it's likely that you've got a positive test. So it was it was strange, really, because I felt fine. It's almost you're waiting to feel a symptom. But thankfully, um, I was really fortunate. Me and my family so far, no symptoms. And I've done my isolation now. They The girls have got to do another seven days. So it's pretty tough for them. But no, we we are very fortunate. I can't, we're really lucky. And what, what is that testing process like as well? It's all right. The first... It's all right now that we, we've been trusted to do it. The physio done it at first and I was felt so violated. The first thing I done was call Jake as soon as I got it. And I was like, have you got to get one of these tests? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, it's going to take your brain off. <laughs> Clean off. It just felt like it, it, was, the, it was shocking. Like one of, and I don't know whether it, oh, you must have been doing it right. The one up your nose. Oh, I must be, I just must be soft because <laughs> I couldn't do it. I, I, was in, I was in pain, but since we were doing it ourselves, it's all right. It's been all right. Maybe it's a psychological thing then if you're doing it yourself. Yeah, it doesn't help when the physio is telling you it's going to hurt. That's not, no, that's not a great feeling. You've got lads coming out going, worst thing you'll ever do. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, great. Oh, I'm looking forward to this then. Uh, um, it's a strange time for football as well. I mean, Preston as well, sitting in the final uh, playoff spot. But you've, you know, you've discovered that season's going to start up again soon. I mean, are you guys looking forward to getting back out there and hopefully securing that place? Yeah, um, it's really exciting. It's um, it's sort of poised uh, really finely. We're sitting in the last spot. You know, we weren't in the greatest bit of form just before, but we've had a terrific season and. Um, you know, there's so much to play for. I think that's what's been so so tough about the lockdown that we've uh, just been wanting to get back to, you know, sort of rectify our, our slightly poor form just before and, and go on a little run to try and cement our playoff, uh, playoff push. Um, looking at your career as a whole, I mean, you started off at Bournemouth um, and came up through the ranks there. I mean, how do you remember those early days? Do you know what? I... I, I loved it. I loved it up until I was about, you know, sort of 17, 18. I stayed there. I was there from when I was seven. So, you know, I loved the club. And then sort of when Eddie left for the first time to go to Burnley then. And under, Brad, under Lee Bradbury, I really enjoyed it, actually. It, uh, he was great. And then and some new managers came in and, you know, just sort of made it clear that I, I, was, uh, I wasn't going to play for him. And, take that as sort of an 18 year old when you've experienced experience what I experienced when I was 15, 16, 17 of playing for Bournemouth it was a strange feeling just to get completely sacked off for a bit and then it, 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 and then it's just sort of left me with a sour note towards Bournemouth really for that next three, four years I was just sort of part of a part of the system really just signing one year deals to stay in the under 21s and train which I, I actually absolutely hated even though I had an amazing coach Stephen Purchase at the time who was who was so good with me I wouldn't have been able to make it if it, if it, it survive it if, it if it wasn't for him but no I was it was a it was a strange feeling I, that's why I went on so many loans because I could have stayed out could have stayed all year but I just couldn't couldn't bear training couldn't bear training there I just had to get on loan somewhere I mean you said at the age of 16 in 2009 you'd make your debut um as well as a sub due to an injury crisis. Um, I read that Eddie Howe had to call up the school and get permission for you to even take part. Yeah, it's a strange one because obviously you get Tuesday night games where I wouldn't be able to, uh, wouldn't be, able to uh, be at school on the Tuesday. So they had to, had to drop a few subjects. I think, it's, I think I dropped Spanish and drama possibly from my GCSEs. <laughs> Not that I was very talented at either. And um, it's, yeah, it was a strange feeling. It's just, you know, looking back, I wish knowing that, I wish I knew what I know now, really, to maybe push a little bit harder. Maybe I, maybe I relaxed a little bit, but I suppose at 15, 16, you, you're not, you don't really know. You're not really aware of what's happening. I think the, the whole embargo thing was a lot of the reason why I, 
I was involved because I, I, I couldn't imagine I would have been if, it, if the club would have been, you know, had money at the time. They were just in, in bits, really. Um, and you made your debut in October 2010 as a 17-year-old. I mean, how were you feeling at that point? I guess, were you pretty nervous at such a young age? Yeah, it was, uh, it was great, really. It was just coming on as a sub appearance. I remember one game away at Shrewsbury. It was one of my first appearances. It was a Saturday morning, about 8 o'clock. I'm just about, I'm at, I stayed at my mate's house the night before. And uh, the first team were away at Shrewsbury. And then I get a call from Eddie saying, right, Joe, the under 18 manager is here to pick you up in five minutes outside your house. Be ready. And you're coming up to Shrewsbury. I was like, what? what? <laughs> I'm in Bournemouth. <laughs> and so I got picked up, up with the, my youth team manager, and I came on for the last like 15 minutes. And it was with no name on my back, with the baggiest top on ever. Like the, my limbs coming out of it looked ridiculous. <laughs> but it was um, like experiences like that really were just just surreal. And I can't really, I can't remember much from them. It seems just another lifetime ago. Um, I mean, you mentioned it already a bit there, but Bournemouth kind of went on a quick rise, didn't they, from League Two up into the Championship? I mean, do you feel like that impacted on the opportunities that you would get as well? Oh yeah, they left me well behind. They 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 they, they signed some unbelievable players. They they smashed League One, and then the Championship went up straight away. They they were so, they were amazing to watch. And the one thing I got out of it was just hopefully learning a lot of how hard you have to work, a lot of life lessons, and I've made a lot of good friends. So that's what I've, I've taken from it. It was, um, that's, you know, it was brilliant. So I, I, I'm, I'm glad it, ha- it all happened. My only wish was that I, uh, maybe it wouldn't have worked out, but maybe I came to Exeter a couple of years before what I did. And, and that's the exp- experimenting of all them loans, which sometimes you're not in control of where you're going. You're sort of sent somewhere. And it's, you know, it's just, you know, the opportunity's there. But, you know, if things would have happened earlier, maybe it would have been, you know, better for me personally. But I can't really have too much regrets about that. I mean, you'd end up joining Exeter for the second half of the 15-16 season and scored yeah. 10, 10 in 21 games. And, you you know, really enjoying your football at that point, weren't you? Yeah, it was great. I think when Tiz rung me, to, when I because I was at Portsmouth the, the start of the season and I got injured for the last two months. So I was really enjoying my time there. And then... I had six months left on my contract at Bournemouth and I thought like this could be the, like my last opportunity in the Football League really to, to, to I've been on so many loans so you know I was thankful that, that Tiz took me took me down the way he spoke sort of you know just made me believe that this was the right destination for me and um, yeah it probably was looking back it didn't put too much pressure on myself at the time I'd, li- I'd just had my little girl so I think I well you know that was that was my sole focus we moved into a little place there, which Becky's parents actually owned, which just seemed to just align. And then um, it just worked. So it just clicked straight away. I remember from the first training session, I just had a great training session like on the first day on an Astra at the uni. And I just thought, yeah, this, this is going to, I just got a good feeling about this. Um, I mean, what were your highlights of your time there as well? I mean, you played in that uh, Devon Derby win where Ollie Watkins turned it around, I'm guessing yeah. that was. I yeah, I was a spectator in that. I didn't have a very good game, actually. Is, um, he, uh, yeah, he was brilliant. Well, he was so great to play. Was, like, coming into a... You know, that's when he came into his real form. That he was scoring every week. He was, um, he was brilliant to play with. Sort of just had a mixture of everything. It was, uh, it was, it was a really good period there. And the team we had, you know, looking back, when they had a front three, sort of, of me, Wheeler and Ollie. It was, you know, it was maybe it just we went, we went at our absolute best at the same time. So it was, uh, we all had our little spells of, um, you know, taking the forefront. But it was a privilege to play with players like that. And uh, it was, you know, you had Ryan and Node behind you as well. So the team was just packed with quality and experience, bit of youth. It is, um, I look back on it on, on my days very fondly and, just well, the the only regret I've got that you know I didn't achieve it didn't achieve promotion that that's the one thing you know that that I I do think about a lot but but yeah but yeah you can't dwell on it too much it's uh, it happened and uh, it would have made my 
I mean, looking back, it, it, it gave me some sense of achievement, definitely. Um, at the end of that loan spell, I mean, your, I'm getting your deal at um, Bournemouth was come to an end and you sign, end up signing for Aberdeen. Was there any chance of you signing for Exeter at that point? There was, there was definitely. And then um, I was having sort of meetings with Tiz and, and everyone else. But, you know, if, uh, at the time, I've been on... Um, I'd, uh, yeah, I've been obviously signing one year deals at Bournemouth and Aberdeen came and offered me a, a, a great opportunity for my family. It was, um, it was you know, the, the whole package was brilliant. I remember sitting down with Tiz and Tiz explained to me that I probably need to take it as well mm. and that in, in that situation he would have. So it was... Uh, it was a, uh, it was brilliant. I'm glad I'd done it. I, I'm really glad I went up there and experienced it because I'd always have wondered, and um, it worked out, worked out perfectly that you know when I returned, that the club were in a better position mm. as well, and and from what they, from what they done, you know, selling Ollie, um, people coming up. I think Wheeler left just as I came, so he had his bit and the club a lot of money as well. So I think it, it all worked out for the best. What was that experience of being able to play in the Europa League like as well? That was great. It was it was so strange. It was um, especially away games. You know, flying out, waiting the whole day, playing at night, the heat, the the um, how, the pressure on some of the games. Like it was, even though it was only the you know the qualifying rounds, you, you, there was still this crazy pressure of how much financially it helps the team to to. Um, the club to uh, to go to the next round, like it, it's it's crazy. So they put so much emphasis on that, on getting through, and uh, it finished on quite a sour note for me. I got sent, I, I got sent off away at Maribor. Are you still uh, banned from Europe now, or is that passed? Yeah, uh, yeah, no, I'm not actually. I served my, I served exactly the season I joined Exeter. At the start of the season, I'd actually played in Europe before. <laughs> before that so no I am I'm not banned which is which is quite strange because I seem to have a tendency of getting a red card up, up in Scotland they didn't take to me very well I was just going to mention that actually I mean you had a couple of unintentional physical incidents uh, whilst you're in Scotland do you feel like you got a bit of an unjust reputation from this there's something that sort of stuck for yeah what? it was um, I just couldn't work it out there was one against I think it was Hearts where I did lash out and that was a straight red but the others were sort of just, I think, two, two other sending offs, both yellow, yellow cards on both four yellows. And they were just for jumping. And, uh, you know, I feel like refs up there are easily influenced by, by other clubs or players. It's, it's, it's a bit, um, some of it's a bit comical, really. But that's... Uh, that was what went on behind the scenes. That's what went, but I, uh, I, I'm, gl- I'm so glad I went up there and I'm so glad I played for a club like the history of Aberdeen and how, how great they were with some unbelievable players at the time who've, who since then have gone on to do some really good things. Absolutely. I mean, you'd end up uh, finally joining City on a permanent deal the following summer um, and you became the club's record transfer. I mean, did that add any pressure, did you think, at the time? Um... No, I, I didn't feel any pressure at the time. It was um, whether that's just you know how Exeter made you feel when you came back there. It was it was I felt a little bit of pressure because I remember Ruben Reed being there and um, obviously Wheeler just left scoring a lot of goals. So I knew that there was goal scorers there. And I knew there's a lot of goals in the team. We had a successful season the year before. So there was the pressure that I put on myself just to get in the team first. I mean. He said to me, you're going to find it tough to get into this team, like, initially. Like, um, and from watching that, Liam McLinden was there and he was on fire. Him and Ruben had a really good partnership. So um, he said, you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to get your head down, train well, play, you know, reserve games and then, and then see what happens. Just take your chances. So I managed to get a couple of goals off the bench and, uh, and then slowly worked my way into the start, starting lineup. But, you know, it was... Uh, because Exeter were flying at that point. So, you know, at that point, it seemed like they were nailed on to go up. Um, just going back to you signing for the club, I mean, the deal took a little while to get over the line, didn't yeah. it? Were other options available for mm. you at the time? Train, yeah, it was between Exeter and Stevenage, only because Stevenage sort of showed their hand initially when, before I'd even told his, I, I could, I, um, I could, I'm looking to go. And, uh, 
Yeah, it was, I spoke, I think Glenn Rhoda called me. I think he had something to do at the club at the time and he uh, tried to convince me to go and it, it sounded great actually. It, was, it sounded like a good prospect and what they were doing. But then, you know, I think Steve Perriman rang me. We chatted for a bit and my mind was made up from Aberdeen. I thought, I thought, like, I can't do another season here just because the refs are on me. It's just too much. I can't risk it again. I need, I need a good season. So they were great. The, the, um, it was, it was, you know, Exeter was the club I always wanted to come back to. It was, I, I was just, you know, Piz was saying it was tough with, with get the funds. It was, it was happening on a day by day. So regarding the trust everyone's due of Exeter, like the, ma- the amount of gratitude I've got for them for, for making it possible for me to come back is, is, is enormous. And you mentioned a few times in interviews that um, you really like the family sort of club and the ethos and atmosphere around the place. You know, you often mix with volunteers out of the training ground. Like, did that come into the thinking as well? Did you want to go back to somewhere that you felt at home? Yeah, I think it's human nature, isn't it? To go back somewhere where you've been successful you feel, and you feel loved, really. I think I was, at, I was quite low in terms of confidence uh, that I was looking for that reassurance and... Um, it was it, yeah, it just it just felt right. It was um, well, as soon as it happened, it just felt like I hadn't been away. And there's so many nice faces around, just people that you just bump into all the time around Exeter. And uh, it was uh, you know the volunteers just put a smile on your face. Whoever's Lou, the kit woman at the time, was just 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 walking in, was just normal. It's just just all right. Don't make a big fuss. It was. Just a real homely feel, but also I had this burning desire in me just to go on and, and try and do as well as I can at Exeter and build on what I'd done before. Absolutely. I mean, it only took you three games to get off the mark as well, scoring that late winner at Barnet. That must have felt good. Yeah, that's when I, you know, I wanted because the run you were on at the time, it was, it was, it was madness. It was, you know, you were flying. So to, I wanted to contribute to. Uh, the run, like the, the initial run, and I think Rube scored first in that game. I think Jake smashed it against the bar from miles out, and then it fell to Rube, which was a great finish. And then, yeah, Sweeney's nodded it back across, I think, mm. for me to uh, put in. It was a, a horrible finish. It came off my studs, but I was, I was delighted. I was so happy. It was just, you know, the start of something for me. It was... Uh, that gave me that gave me a real big lift to get that goal early on. Absolutely. I mean, you'd end up scoring 21 league goals and 25 in all competitions that season. Were you just enjoying that consecutive run of football that you were on as well? Yeah, it was great. It was great. I was. I would love to have you know played the first sort of 10 games as well. But I was. Uh, it was. It was. It was brilliant. It was, the, the 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 setup we had. The, the you know the camaraderie we had in the squad as well was was fantastic and. You know, we should have really gone on. We should have finished in the automatics that year. We should have, um, you know, a few games. I think there was a corny game at home. We drew two all. And one always sticks mm-hmm. out. If we won that, we would have gone on. But, yeah, it's all lifts and buts. You know, the teams that went out, went out. But I'll still look back on it, even though we didn't. I'll still look around and play with some great mates and do it as well as we can. And uh, it, was, it was just a, it was a great time for me personally. I think if you look at that, I think it was that season, that goal you um, converted against Swindon, where the whole team were involved. Yeah. That yeah, just showed how well gelled the team was at the time, didn't it? Yeah, it was. It was um, Troy Archibald Henry. I remember played like an amazing splitting pass first time into midfield. And it was uh, just wrote, this, it was just brilliant. Lloydy had it up on the side, and then Jake and Sweeney's on the right. I think Kane was there, wasn't he, at the time? Yeah. Up on the right, and then the interchange between them, Haram crossed it for me, I think, and then uh, I was on a bit. I hadn't scored in a few games before that, so it was uh, that was that was nice to, to get that. Last, it was the third goal, wasn't it? So um, yeah. it was, uh, yeah, that was a great team goal. We and we done that a few times. We, we didn't. It felt like we scored too many. Like we were defensively great, and then we would sort of rely on you know a, a, a goal to to win. We won a lot of games one nil, I think. Um, and then it was up, obviously the playoff semi-finals against uh, Lincoln yeah. that season. Um, nil-nil draw at their place, quite a nervy sort of one. Had set it up for a winner takes all affair at St James Park, hadn't it? Yeah, it was. I was watching the highlights to the first leg the other day. Actually, it was quite interesting. That was that's what won us the tie. I think the the nil-nil at Lincoln, but we got some of the chances they had, and Pimmy was unbelievable. So 
some of the chances, yeah, some of the chances they had. We had a couple. I should have scored one now. I missed it for some reason. I didn't dive in the header. It. I went for a volley, but uh, it was that nil-nil. Really, gate. I think we just went to the change room after. And we just thought, we'll, well, I think we'll go through to the final there, just because how important it was to stop them scoring. Um, so yeah, that and that's probably the most nervous I've ever been before a game. That lit, it's maybe because it's a night game, so you're just waiting all day. I remember just take, taking my little girl out to the park just because I wanted to get away and not think about the game. That night, I was just like, yeah, right, stop thinking about football because you're just going to drive yourself mad. And to this day, I've never been nervous before a game, but that one, for some reason, I just felt like, you know, I had an you know, obligation of scoring all these goals in the season that you've got to turn up in the playoffs. So, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And you'd end up scoring early on in that game. Um, and I think the celebration showed just how much that meant to you as well. Yeah, I've got, I've got actually, my girlfriend got me as a birthday present, a, uh, like a three pictures of that celebration with the fans of the big bank behind me. And that is, uh, that's, uh, I love it. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's brilliant. So that is, um, that goal was huge just because it's just so tense before. It was like, Anything that was happening, everyone was like, oh, who's going to score the first goal? It's, and then, you know, it was Sweden spent it on to me to volley, but it was, uh, it was just, yeah, it was, uh, that goal was, yeah, probably the most important one I've scored to date, really. I mean, decent finish, but then it gets overshadowed by the next two goals. Oh, I can believe it! <laughs> I, can, I scored the worst goal of the night, for somehow. <laughs> it's a lot, isn't it? Yeah, it's a volley. Haram's goal was a joke. I don't know... I just don't know what he plucked out of the sky. I mean, it was just ridiculous. And then Ryan showed like the audacity just to half volley it, but just as clean as possible from miles out. It was no effort like, whatsoever in that, was there either? Yeah. Oh, it was just, it's just, he could do that though. It's just off like either feet, just strike it as true as possible. Um, um, it was just, yeah. That, and, and, then, and then you knew, three and a lap, you're, you're, you're sort of, you're coasting through the game from then on. I mean, I'm assuming you were in front of Hiram the whole time he was going on his run. Um, yeah. What did you see of it? And did you think he was going to score? I just, he just, he's one of them players who's just so tough to tackle because he just dribbles it with his, so close to his foot and he can chop it either way. As soon as he got onto the left, you're just thinking, hit it, hit it. You got on that run, just, just hit it. I was in no position to get past the ball. So he didn't go wide enough for me to, <laughs> for him to cross it. He was down the middle, so he was... Uh, and then the, it was posting in, and it was, yeah, uh, yeah, two 0 up. Then you, you start thinking about, you know, the next game from then. And um, what were the celebrations like when the whistle went as well, and everyone bundles on the pitch? Yeah, great. I actually wish I milked it a bit more. I got straight in because, you know, I think I spoke to a few fans, spoke to a few of their players as well, uh, and their manager just wishing them the best because it was a great battle against them in every game we played against them that year. And they were a really good side, which they showed the year after. And um, so it was, it was, it was great to, uh, to do that. And then the celebrations with the lads after was um, that was that was brilliant. That that night would be one. That's, that was an unbelievable night. Did you end up going out or anything, or was it uh, in the change? Just a just a just a pub lock in, <laughs> just closed off. And then Sky Sports would play the goals with this on the loop, like of the day. Just they have, like, they have to at seven and eight, and then every time it's on, Haram starts his run all in the pub, <laughs> and it was just drinks everywhere every time it went in the net. And they must have showed it about ten times. <laughs> it was uh, so that yeah, that was, everyone was there. Everyone had to be there straight away. So that was that was that was an amazing experience. Um, so yeah, back to Wembley then for the second year. Running, I mean, how how were the guys feeling before the game? We were really confident. We'd we'd gone on. We worked. We worked on so much. Um, we knew Coventry were were a lot a lot better than what their league position would say. That like, they just they think they started the season terrible, and then just kept going and going. But they had a team just full of good players, really good players, and. Um, there was no weak link in their team whatsoever. They 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 were good, and they like we did it at Lincoln. They scored three worldies, and it just knocked. So it felt it felt like what Lincoln players must have felt when when Haram's goal went in. They must have just thought, "Wow, oh, come on!" 
Right, this is ridiculous. And their centre half at Wembley just bends one in the top corner. You think that's amazing. Fair, fair play to you. That's that's ridiculous. I mean, you guys have worked really hard to get to nil nil at half time as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Remember, it was it was tough. It, we, chances were so hard to come by. We played, you know, we played slightly defensive that day. I think Ryan and Jake on the wings, or mm. no, it was Dino on the wing, wasn't it? Dino on the left wing, and yeah. then Jake on the right. Ryan off me. And we just struggled to get up the pitch. You know, we were building from really deep and it was just, we just, for some reason, we just struggled to get up the pitch. It was, uh, you know, being pegged back and we were, we were pretty fortunate to get in nil-nil. And then, you know, they scored straight away in absolute world. And then was it Grimmer, the right back, mm-hmm. scored with his wrong foot in the top corner again? And then, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was difficult from there. It was, it was so diff. The first goal was going to win it. How do you feel when that final whistle goes and, you know, the whole, you've, something you've built up to over the whole season has suddenly come to an end? Yeah, I just wanted to get, I just wanted to get home as soon as possible. I hated it. Oh, it was just the worst feeling. I just didn't even want to think about it. It's like I eradicated it from my head and just thought about next year. I was just like, no, that didn't happen. It was just like, I think I had one chance that was in like the last minute. So I tried bodied wide, which is just a chest. Mm. just felt like, I don't even feel like I played a game of football there. Like, I was just, I was just so angry. It was, uh, it was, um, yeah, just a case of trying to get back. I just couldn't wait for pre-season to start that year. I mean, and how? I mean, it was bad for you, but how was it for you know, like Jake Sweeney and people like that, which was the second year in a row that this had happened. I know, like, you, like that must have been. It must have been horrible for them. Uh, I guess they were thinking, you know, because I'd been in such good form and I didn't experience what they experienced the year before. So I wouldn't be carrying any of that baggage. But I don't think there was necessarily that. It was, um, I felt obviously awful for him because, you know, if it happened two years in a row, not many teams or players would have experienced that. So I was, yeah, absolutely gutted for them. But we pulled each other through that period, whether it be with joke or mm. sitting down and chatting properly. We had our ways of dealing with it and, it and it and it did fuel our, you know, aspirations for the next year. It was uh, something you experienced. I know you experienced great times together and you can and that can just make your relationship grow, but going through them that heartbreak as well, I think that's what's you know made us closer. Absolutely. And we, we got through that together and then and then and, and and tried to rectify it. You know, then um, Paul Tisdale would end up leaving the club um, in that summer and Matt would take over. I mean, how, how, what were you, the team's sort of re- reaction to that? You know what? It was great. We were getting into the unknown and um, a lot of the players, it must have been strange before, we played for Tiz for longer. But I, uh, it was such a strange, because you didn't believe Tiz would go. Like, I just, just wouldn't believe it, no matter how far along the line it got. It, it, just, just, it was the norm, but... When Matty took over, yeah, going into the unknown, I knew one thing that was certain that pre-season was going to be tough. <laughs> that is all I, I knew that straight away. So I was like, right, better do a bit this off-season then because <laughs> that is going to be tough. And the, uh, he, you could see what he was starting to do the, the year that Tiz was here with likes of Jordan's story. Mm. And Archie, he, he, you know, he was what he was building, what, what, what his values were, and how hard he worked. So it was, um, it you, you could see, you could see what he was gonna, gonna bring, and, uh, and he didn't fail in, in, in that. It was, it was a, um, it was a strange one. My head was a bit, not, in pre-season, it was a bit, you know, what a bit wobbled at the time. Mm. A lot of strikers were, um. A lot of strikers were moving from League Two to the Championship that time, mm. and it was a bit frustrating for me personally. Not, I didn't, I didn't actually want to go. I didn't want to go at the time. I was, I was desperate to go up, and I didn't want to leave Exeter. But these, all these players were signing for Championship clubs from League Two, and you know, I wasn't, wasn't getting a sniff. And I was thinking, well, what, what's going on here? Like, at least want to, I at least want a bit of interest. But everyone was going just a bit of confidence, so my head was a bit scrambled. And then, as soon as I, I think we played Bristol Rovers in pre-season, mm. and from then onwards, I thought I was. That's when I got back to my best. Because I didn't have a very good pre-season; I wasn't very good. But then we played Bristol Rovers, and then that's when it clicked, and it just gave me so much desire for that season. And and Matty was instrumental in that, in telling me, talking to me a lot, 
getting my head right that you know what's what you've done last season is brilliant but if you can back it up again mm. like how, how important it is for me personally you end up scoring 16 goals you know before the new year I mean if you ended up at the City for the whole season how many do you reckon you'd have got yeah I was definitely you know I, I was just wanted to break 30 that was in my head just just to and I had this this strange thing that like I whenever anyone said I was like oh, I don't I don't really I don't fantasize about that too much but I needed to get to 50 goals before 100 games I just needed to I was like no my ratio needs to be better than one in two and I when I was on like 30 goals I played like 50 something games I was like still better than one in two. and it was it was doing that like the whole way and then I just went on a really good run before in December mm. and I was just like oh amazing it, it's better than one in two and I, I had it in my head 50 just get to 50 I remember talking to Jacob about it I was like I just need to get to 50 right that that milestone just it just felt massive for me really mm. I got obsessed by it <laughs> I mean scoring that hat trick at Oldham would have helped with that ratio as well yeah it I mean, was pouring I, rain yeah it was because I missed a pen at Berry a few weeks before and I'd, I'd not scored for a couple so I was I was worried at the time I was like, oh no, this isn't gonna, this isn't gonna work out. I'm, I'm gonna lose this, that one in, one in one point something. <laughs> and that, I was like, don't make it up to one in two. Um, and then yeah, that hat trick w- w- was brilliant. It all, it all clicked that day. That was that was a that was a great day. That was that was um, that was fantastic. I enjoyed football so much that for that half season. It was, Matt, it was great. I was fit. I was I was so confident. We the t- Team were great, and um, yeah, I really, en- I just really, really enjoyed my football there. Then at that period, I mean, you said you just mentioned them, but how, what was the bond like between you guys in the dressing room at that point? I mean, you because you mentioned that you, you know, you were happiest you've been playing football at that, you know, at that point. Yeah, the relationships were just growing. You know, we signed Nicky in the summer; mm-hmm. and he was great. Lee Martin was brilliant, and the, the team just evolved together. It was we just got on so well. It was. You know, Matty is big on sort of team bonding stuff, so that that brought us together a lot. And um, so that, you know, the, to leave to leave, and when I did leave, it was it was really upsetting. It was it was really it was really really tough, and it was a lot of conversations with a lot of people. But um, you know, to, to, just to leave behind actual mates, you know, you're all down there in Exeter together. You do stuff together. It's, it doesn't really happen at any other club I've been at, in terms of because you're all from the same. You're living in the same place, so you do things together. So it's 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 a, it's a it's a unique experience in that aspect. You also um, mentioned that you um, said the fans were truly unbelievable as well when you left. I mean, how good was it to yeah. see your name now on the big bank? Yeah, that was great. That was amazing. Um, such such brilliant you know, memories of that and um you know there's a little there's that you know the little the wall outside of exeter you know, they, they they went down there and my picture got on that and it was uh just little things like that just to make it like i don't i'd seen a lot of this in, in the past and i'd seen uh, a lot of the successful strikers in exeter's history before so when my goal tally started growing that was what that was my next goal, you know, to, to, to leave something behind, you know, just just great memories for people. And the Exeter fans were, were just fantastic with me, whether I played a few bad games in a row just to keep my confidence up. Um, and, you know, I the one thing I did is at Exeter every single game was, you know, trying my hardest and I was desperate to win games. You know, it would come across sometimes as I was the moaniest person on the planet. But... Not not worse than Lee Martin, just under him. But I was, I was, you know, so desperate to 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 go on and achieve something there, and and every single game, you know, do my best. What was it that you enjoyed about playing at St James Park as well? I mean, it's a, quite a unique little stadium in its ways, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Um, it, what was I? It's it's the big banks is uh, you know it looks formidable but there behind the goal. It's, uh, it's the noise that they make, you know, and it's, you know, the numbers aren't massive like you get at other clubs, but just the feeling you get, just, you know, it, as a player, it's, 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 what you, it's what you want. And it's, um, I've got so much respect for them fans because they've got so much patience that they're willing to, 
to wait for you to you know come into form they don't write you off instantly they, they actually take their time to assess you know the player you are what will what will be benefit you they're, they're, they just seem to just get it and they're um the, the the bond we had together was amazing and I think it was my last game for Exeter which was Grimsby on a nine game and we lost 2-1 we, we had oh, about uh, 400 yeah about 480 shots <laughs> on their goal and we just couldn't couldn't score but I knew I sort of knew it was my last game and it was uh, it was just it was just like I knew but maybe not everyone else knew hmm. it was uh it was yeah, that was that was a hard night. That was. Um, did you enjoy the bit? Because when you get to matches, obviously on a match day, you have to go through the car park and through the fans and everything. I don't know if it's like that at all clubs, but did you enjoy sort of that bit of interacting with the fans? You know, signing autographs, having a chat with the fans. Yeah, I loved it. I loved it because I, I didn't like to think about the game too much until I actually started kickoff. Um, I just like so integrating with the fans for having a chat. It'd be a weekly routine, you know. It was it was just speaking to normal in the car park, and you'd, it'd be it'd be great. And then you'd walk walk in, and you'd speak to familiar faces, have a little look in the ticket office, you know, have a little look uh, who's ordering a burger up there. And then you walk on, you walk in, and you maybe there's a kids party on, just drift in there do a few autographs and um, come back out, play a bit of FIFA with the kids and uh, talk to the groundsman on the way in. It's just, that's, that, I've not experienced that before. Normally you go in, don't you, you're in the change room straight away. So you don't have to do a tour of the, of the whole ground before you get in the change room. But it was like that, except, but it, was, it gave us a chance, you know, for people to relate to, I guess, and, and for their for friendship to grow. Absolutely. And you mentioned that magic ratio. We well, yeah, are pretty sure this is correct, but you got 51 goals in 97 matches um, before you yeah. left. I mean, you, you must have been delighted with that come the end. Yeah, I think it might be 98 games. That's what I've got. Okay. You, uh, 97 sounds better. But yeah, I'll in, that, that sounds very good. <laughs> but yeah, that's what it was. I, um, it was, yeah, I'm really proud of it. I'm really proud of it. It was... Um, it was it was great, and every time I got onto that pitch, it felt like I was going to score in them colours. So, it's that club is responsible for you know for everything that's happened since, and I put a lot of it down for, for me. Although I spent all those years at Bournemouth, I think my the most important learning I did in football was at Exeter. That is the club that taught me so much, and um, you know, and stood stood me in good stead for for the lesson that I've learned. It's that Exeter. Football club, I've got so much to be thankful for for it, and it's you know it's, it it will it will always be in my heart, definitely. Scoring all those goals as well got you on the Walk of Fame uh, for the goal scorers coming into the ground. Um, yeah. Alongside you know likes of Tony Kello, Alan Banks, um, Jamie Curran, and you know Richard Logan, yeah. Stano. Does that mean a lot to you? Yeah, I mean every single one of them are brilliant players who've done so great for Exeter. So yeah, I wanted to be. I wanted to be on there, and at the time, I wanted to I wanted to have the best ratio out of anyone. That was my that's just how I felt. That's what got me through games and seasons. It was it was that, and you know, it's just disappointing that I didn't you know get the, the seasons I was there. I'd never had a full season at Exeter. I was there for half a season, then I was there for when I re-signed. I missed the first sort of eight nine games, and then the season I left, I did half a game, so the half season. So I was never there for I covered three seasons, but never actually done a season the whole way through. So that was that's frustrating. If I'd have completed every single one of those seasons, then you know it would have it would have been great. But just I'm just thankful that it happened. Really, um, out of those 51 goals, uh, which would you pick as your favourites? I think the Lincoln one, the Notts County away one. Um, the only time I've ever played on the shoulder of a Defender <laughs> and Jake Burn, it? Big parts had to be pinpoint, otherwise, I was not getting it. And um, what other ones were there? No, no, I'm not really thinking about My first goal was against um, Morecambe away. You got a double in that game, didn't you? No, no just one. It was one, all. It was one all. Yeah, Morecambe yeah. got a double at home. Mm. Morecambe, I always seem to score against for some reason. Mm. Um, but away, I think Woody crossed it with his left. I and I came across my man and volleyed it in. 
looking to celebrate at Woody after, but he just turned around and walked straight back That's to... Good. Yeah, and I was like, brilliant. He doesn't fancy it, so I went off on my own, as I usually did. There was that just, goal against Morecambe at home, wasn't there, over the shoulder that you lashed? Yeah, off. yeah, that was, that was my first start. Mm. That was my first start since I came back. So that, I felt a lot of pressure on, on that game. I got a double in that one, and it was two really good goals. It was, uh, yeah, thrown from Dina, and I managed to pick it over to someone. And volley it in. So that yeah, that was great actually. That that was a brilliant day. My highlight of that as well was um, the stagecoach stand was closed at that point because they were starting the redevelopment, and I was yeah, in, yeah. in front of there with the camera. And then you you come bombing <laughs> over and celebrate in front of me rather than the fans. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was it. There was no one over there, so I thought you're getting it. <laughs> that was it. Was um, it was strange, but the stadium needed that. It looks it's amazing how it looks now. It's. Uh, they played too many games, but actually, once it's been open, but it's, um, you know, that ground is so impressive now. Definitely. Um, what about favourite match out of all the, one, out of the 98 or 7 that you played? Uh, personally, Oldham, because I'd never, I'd, I'd never scored a hat-trick. I, was, I used to say I scored two in so many games and I just couldn't get a hat-trick. It was just really annoying. I think because, you know, I, I think out of all my goals... I scored two pens out of those 51 goals, and it was against more, two pens with Morecambe at home. And it was Grimsby or one of them? Yes, Grimsby away, yeah. And then I missed one of them. So that's probably why I won on them. But uh, um, it was, you know, it was um, that Oldham one when I did finally get the hat trick. I think Holmesy crossed it for my third. It was, it was an amazing ball. Uh, it was uh, that was a really good feeling because I was desperate to get my first hat trick in the in the professional football. Absolutely desperate, and I've got Holmesy to thank because his he delivery. Was, there, oh, he was him and Nicky that day were unbelievable. That pitch was really yeah. cut up as well, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it was horrendous. And um, Holmesy, if I look back on my if I look back on my career at Exeter, Holmesy delivered some unbelievable assists for me. He he was. He was so good to play with just because you'd get the ball and you'd, you'd, just, you'd be excited in the box. He'd do his little step over, out, and he'd just whip it without even looking. It was, it was amazing. Um, you had a really strong friendship and still do with Jake Taylor as well. I mean, uh, do you keep in touch with any of the other guys as well? Yeah, yeah. so me and Jake talk pretty much every day, even if I'm calling him, just tell him about my you know, flower bed and uh, my decking, which we are at the moment. Of, and really. Really grown up conversations at the moment, which is a bit scary. Uh, Sweens and MJ I talk to all the time in a group with Dino. And we, yeah, we just chat about rubbish, really. Nothing ever sensible was said, especially from Sweeney's mouth. Um, and uh, yeah, me and, me and Matty have spoken as well, exchanged texts over, over various points as well. So it's, um, I've, I'll always talk to people about that. Me and Brian Harley still talk every day, Troy Brown. We talk all the time, so it's uh, it's just that's what Exeter does, I think, and more than a lot of other clubs. Is it just those? I know I'll be friends with them people for a long time. It's not just you know, a, just because I was there for a year, we'll we'll token talk for another year, and then it'll fizzle out. Well, not on my part. Jake might. Jake's not getting rid of me. <laughs> <laughs> I will be banging on him. You mentioned earlier that you've been on holiday with him, and you um. You're planning on going holiday again this summer, aren't you? Yeah, we we, we just like uh, again, we went to centre parks with the kids, just something like that. It would have been where we were quite chilled. The girlfriends get on, and um, he was due to get married obviously this summer, so that's a shame for him. But he uh, we was gonna go. Oh, might be even more of a shame for him. His stag was cancelled, so that's the more disappointing thing for me, for selfish point of view. That's a bit gutted about that. Um, but it will get moved and it will be colossal. It, so we'll, uh, we'll get our chance to do it. But Sweens came, we went on holiday, Sweens came to Centre Parks as well. But we'll get a chance to do it again. We, 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 we get on so well. And it's, uh, yeah, I'm still just, you know, thankful for that period of time. Something to look forward to, definitely. Um, yeah. uh, Preston came uh, halfway through the season. Um, how did that come about? And were they the club, you know, were there other options or was it? Strictly Preston. No, it was, it was. There was a few options at the at the time. There was uh, was Wigan. You know, there was obviously MK were there sniffing around as well. Um, 
there was a there was there was a few options there but it happened so quick obviously i had the release clause in my contract so that's probably why you know this in the summer nothing nothing you know materialized as clubs knew that you know you're gonna get you ready to get you for a lot cheaper in that in in six months time so it was uh it was a case of I just didn't want anything dragging through January. I didn't want to go on the last day of January, the club not be able to sign anyone. Uh, Matty didn't want it like that. He, you know, he was, he was, um, he was so great during that period of just talking to me, giving me advice. When you choose your next club, make sure these things, make sure it's how you feel, get weigh it up, don't make a decision quickly. He, uh, he just made the whole experience nice for me. It wasn't horrible. Mm. It wasn't as, 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 as sad as I was leaving. I was, you know, I had this desire to play as high as possible. And he just, you know, was with me the whole way, talking to me, updating me, who's come in, when they've come in. Nothing was held secret to me. And it's just, just properly done. He's, he's a proper bloke. And, and the club's just a proper football club that handle things in the right way. So... You hear all these horror stories of you know players falling out. There's been a few recently, haven't there? Like people aren't playing, and it's just I just didn't want it to end on a sour note. Just please let it happen smoothly. I don't want to fall out of anyone. I don't want to refuse to play because in case I get injured, like something pathetic like that, which I don't agree with. Um, so that what happens happens. So it was um, it was a case of just hopefully it gets done in the right way and actually have time in that window to, to then sign someone else. And what was it about Preston that stood out to you from your options? I mean, it's, they're quite, quite a similar club in terms of their values to Exeter, aren't they? With the yeah, whole... that's exactly what I felt like when I had the tour around. It was not these, like, grand, massive buildings and, like, oh, look how, look how, look how much we've got or look how modern this is. It's, it still had the, the volunteers around and the, the people around the club, the same old faces who worked there years and and um just loved the club and it was uh it was values like that that you know just made the whole experience i think they just ease you and then you can get to talking about the football and i spoke to the manager and that you know speaking to the manager was when it you know it it felt right to me that you know i'm, I'm someone that does have his values and his morals and speaking to him definitely made my mind up in terms of that's the place where i wanted to go and how have you enjoyed it so far i mean do you think you've ad- how have you adapted to life in the championship I've absolutely loved it. Honestly, it, I'm, uh, I'm so happy up here and family are, are really settled up here. I've actually, which is strange, I think I've been up here now the longest I've been at, been at a club, obviously not Bournemouth included, but which is strange like, to think about it like that. But I'm really, really enjoying myself up here. And I, um, I feel like I've you know, adapted really well to, to the role I'm playing, to the, to, the, to the way I've played. Obviously, you, you always to get better and but I've got a uh, a really good feeling that I uh that it's really going to work out for me and it's uh it's going to be a really good place for me I mean and John Story at the club as well you uh knew him from yes the- big John how's that yeah going? it was nice to see a familiar face when I first signed although he did call me and he he was like all right all right there Jane and I was like hello buddy he's like yeah I think you should come to Preston and I was like oh no, they've not sent you to call me, have they? <laughs> oh, George. Oh, no. Quickly, hang up the phone now, George. You're going to ruin it for me. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, uh, he's a great lad as well. He's a great player as well. He plays, I think, a young player of the year last year. But he's brilliant, brilliant. And um, he'll have a good future. He'll keep his, he keeps his head on his shoulders properly. He'll be another great player. And another one that, you know, City have produced. Absolutely. I mean, finally, I guess I'll have to ask you, do you ever see yourself back in a red and white shirt one day in the future? Albeit it may be yeah, I think so. I think so. You know, it's, hopefully things here at Preston work out really well, which I, I'm, I'm so positive they will be. I've, I've got a really good, really good feeling about up here. And then you never know in the future, but I want to come back when, you know, I'm, I've got something to, something so much to offer. So, 
I'll, uh, I'll always look out and it's somewhere that I could definitely vision myself playing in the future and uh, contributing to what I've done before because I definitely won't be going back there just to rest on my laurels. It'll be to, to be adding to what I've, uh, I've done so far. But just, you know, if, if you're still there anyway and uh, everyone else is down there, then it'll be it'll just be a great place just to go and visit, which we will. It's just a shame that we're so far apart. Yeah, true. Well, you're always welcome back whenever as you know thank you mate Um, thanks for your time Jaden, and good luck with the remainder of the season cheers buddy thank you it's been great talking